Yes, Lord. Give me a test on your mic. That's going to be two, three, four. Two. Test, test, test. It's going to be what, number three? Test, one, two. Test, one, two. Jesus said, Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Welcome to today's program, It's Really Supernatural, Acts of the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Henry Schaefer. I believe in the supernatural, and God is on the move in these last days. Let's move into the program and see another chapter that could be written in the book of Acts. Hello and welcome CSRA. I'm your host, Henry Schaefer, and welcome to another edition of It's Really Supernatural. I've got a great lineup here for you tonight. We've got a studio full here tonight. I have Steve Hall, Tim McIver, and a guest here, special guest tonight is going to be Tommy Paris, he's here. He's on the radio with us tonight. He's going to be giving his testimony. But let me pick it up with my co-host here tonight. Brother, it's good to have you with us tonight. Tim McIver. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. It may be cold outside, but God is moving in the supernatural in these days. I'm excited about this program tonight. I don't know who's listening, but I'm going to tell you what. God's about to enlighten you of the fact that he is real, and he's going to bring witnesses to prove it. Amen. Amen. And also we have in the studio with us. Now, this is an exceptional night for us. Hallelujah. Because we've got um, Pastor Steve Hall of the Johnston Church of God. He is here with us, and he does the shows. Uh, he's the host of In the Last Days that airs on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. Steve, it's good to have you with us here. And it's good to be here with you. There we go. Get me some uh, volume, maybe a little bit more. There you it's go. It's good to be here with you and uh, looking forward to the show tonight. I just say I was sitting around the house and I ain't doing nothing right now. I'm going to head out to the Come studio. on in. <laughs> so it's good to be here with you, brother. Yeah, well, and then, of course, we have uh, Tommy Parrish. He's here with us. Tommy, good to have you in the studio, and we'll give you an introduction here in just a moment. But go ahead and speak to the listening audience. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you here in the studio with us. Well, listen, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, a deliverance, deli demonic deliverance, deliverance from spirits. You know, when you say demons, that, that just people's hair goes on the end. Yeah. If you say demonic, the hair goes up. If you say spirits, they're okay with that. They say, Pastor, just talk them spirits. Well, that's well, the Bible talks about uh, demons and unclean spirits and uh, spirits of infirmity and things like that, evil spirits. So uh, we'll use those words interchangeably tonight. So that'll be our lingo that we use here tonight. But it is Friday. It is the night. Of this the uh, January the night it's seven o'clock uh, so if you're listening to this any other time than 2015 Friday the night at seven o'clock you are listening to a rebroadcast and it does rebroadcast uh, Saturdays at three o'clock at on uh, WCC 99.9 you can listen to it there as well and then it also randomly throughout the year you'll hear it plugged in here or there hours of the night things like that it, the computer will pick it up and plug it in and you know if if you are listening and it is a rebroadcast it's because the lord wants you to hear it oh yeah i like that he, he's trying to enlighten some people about the real kingdom of god that we're walking in and not the one that some people want to just think it to be because i believe god wants his people to be free i believe that, right, that. i believe that as well Amen. and now listen to those who are listening out there 
you can uh, got something new happening here at the studio, uh, live audio stream. Uh, well, that's the way we do our audio is www.cwchrist.com. Click on the red Listen Live anywhere in the world, smartphone or tablet, especially if you're getting out of your car. Just put it on your phone right there and go to that website, cwchrist.com. Click on it. Take us on inside the house with you uh, as well or get on your tablet or your computer there and do it. Now, something we're doing here uh, that is new, uh, we have a studio webcam that's set up. You can go to ustream.com, search for WUCC, and you'll see us there uh, live streaming right now. But you can do it on the website as well. Click right there in the middle. You can see it. Go to our Facebook. Now, this is the, I'm going to tell you, this is the best way to do it. If you would do Facebook and uh, search us out on Facebook at 999WUCC, on the top right-hand side, you're going to see a big 99.9 uh, little logo there. And you click on that, you're going to see a big, big uh, screen that you can look here, look in here with. And you can see Tommy. You can see Tim McIver. You can see Steve Hall, Henry Schaefer. If you're looking in, we're speaking to you right now, and everybody's pointing at you, giving you a thank you for tuning in via the Internet uh, as well. Got something here for us, brother? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, Pastor Schaefer, when you installed the cameras, all of us started dressing a little bit better for yeah, the show. Yeah, combing our hair. <laughs> you know, I, I've got I got a famous I got a famous cow lick, you know, in the back of my hair there. And they've even told me, they said, man, you got a cow lick right there, and the one who does my hair, she said, man, I have to work on that thing. And I said, Fran, why don't you tell me that? She said, we just used to seeing you with it, you know, so we don't think nothing about it. <laughs> well, you know, one thing about the cameras that makes me think about deliverance, and that is when you know somebody's watching, you're going to act differently. I think when the demons know we're watching, they're going to act a little bit differently. That's right. Well, listen, here's what we're going to do. As we begin tonight, brother, we're going to pray. We're going to pray over this thing uh, before we start into it. And, uh, Steve, you want to pray uh, for us if you would? Yeah. Father in heaven, we're so grateful for the opportunity to come on the airways here at WCC. We know that you've given us this radio station to reach out and teach the area that you cover with the radio station. Yes, and we sir. want to glorify you tonight. We want to lift up the name of Jesus that's above every other name. Amen. We want your anointing and protection to be on the studio and upon all the equipment, upon those that are listening. Dear Lord, we want you to get glory and honor out of this tonight. We want others to hear that they can be set free. And, God, we pray that the Holy Spirit would drive that thought straight into their heart, that they can be free from all the things that Satan is putting on them. They don't have to live a life of bondage or desperation. Thank but, you. God, they can be free in the name of Jesus. So we ask for these many blessings on our service tonight here on our broadcast in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Jesus, for what's going on. Somebody shout amen. 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 Wow. Uh you know, here's what here's one thing I want to talk about uh, tonight is that um, the deliverance from demonic powers. Um, you know, uh, there's a there's an issue. one thing we're going to talk about is the the Christian, uh, the unsaved person, uh, and versus the Christian. Let me go ahead and set the 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 the, the ground mm -hmm. is that if you are unsaved, you're not a Christian. The devil already claims you as his. You are his. You got to understand that. It's not a matter that you are his and you are part of his kingdom. Now, once you become a Christian and that Christ Jesus claims you as his and we are either in one or two kingdoms. Now, here's the purpose of the demonic forces that are out there. Here's the groundwork. The first the first thing that the demons are, are assigned to is to keep you from hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, to blind you, to keep you from hearing and he has done a very good job from people not hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then if you do hear the gospel and you do respond to the gospel, the second thing in their, in their tier, their task is that if you lose him in the war, if you lose him to the enemy, today the devil says, if, you, if we lose him to the other side, the good side, to Jesus, then your, your assignment changes. Your assignment now is to cause them not to live a whole life for Christ Jesus, to divide the house so that it won't stand, it can't stand like it needs to, to be able to, and those people misunderstand that scripture, how can a, how can a house divide its stand? They say, well, if Christ Jesus is in the house, then that, there can't be anything else. No, this parable is this way here. A house divided against itself can't stand, and the devil knows that. 
So if he can get inside your house as well and buffet you, the house can't stand. It cannot serve Jesus as they should. Does that make sense what we're talking about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so that's the thing is that so you've got to get past that mindset that I can't have any problems. And if you're willing to pull back the fig leaves in your life and say, yeah, I am a Christian, but I do have those dark areas that are in my life that the demons are still having control over and I need to be set free from it, then you can be set free. But until you're willing to say, hey, I am like that, then you'll just live your life in a divided house and you'll never be fully effective for the kingdom of God as God wants us to be. Help me out, brother. Amen. Yeah, you know, denial is the thing that Satan would like for you to do as a Christian because if you deny that you have a problem, then you won't be delivered from the problem. Right. Absolutely. But when you begin to admit, you know what, I'm out here, I'm trying to serve God, and I have this really, really bad problem in my life, and I've been struggling with it, then if you can admit that, then God can bring you to deliverance. Yes. But you got to acknowledge, you know, if you're a sinner, you got to acknowledge you're a sinner before you can be saved. Right. If you're oppressed by the devil, you got to admit that, hey, I'm being oppressed by the devil before you can be delivered from that. So, okay, now now let's go ahead and step down. You know, some people might be tuning us out. Well, that's all right. We're going to tell you the truth anyway. <laughs> that's the purpose. That's why we're called the voice of truth is to help you. Now, next thing is, is just say you become a Christian and you are dealing with just say i let's take one issue pornography okay and you before you got saved you had an issue with pornography because there's many people like that and that because of that pornography that once you become a christian you're able to overcome it you're able to overcome it through fasting reading the word and prayer and in good fellowship and you have got that thing under control then that means then that that was something that was tied into your flesh, your spirit man and all, but that it was not an area of life that was under demonic control, okay? Right. It was just something you engaged in your flesh. Once you become a Christian, and now you cannot control yourself in that area. I mean, you repent, you cry, you fast, you ask God to forgive you, and then three months later, you're back in it. And you have to satisfy that, that satisfaction through that, and then you come back out and you repent and all the things again. You say, God, I'll never do it again. And three months later, you're back into it again. That can be a sign of demonic control in your life, Christian. And you need help. And that's what we're here to bring the truth to that. It could be the same thing with cigarettes. It could be with alcohol. It could be with illicit sex. It could be, listen, with anger. How many people are so angry and bitter in that they keep asking God to forgive them and if it's something in their flesh, you know, a part of their, their of just their emotional makeup, they right should be able to uh, not let the works of the flesh, not let that emotional man get away, but let the fruit of the Spirit come through. Amen. And it would be able to be contained like it should be by yielding to the Holy Ghost. But if you are in, in certain areas, all they got to do is push your buttons and you're going to blow your stack. Yes. And, and everybody has to walk on eggshells around you. You probably got a demonic stronghold in your life and you need to be set free and that's what we're here to tell people about is that you have to grasp the understanding the devil wants to divide your house and your spiritual house so you can't stand and your testimony can't be what it needs to be did i explain this well enough oh, yes, yes you did yes you know yes. so that is what i'm trying to show people is that you can't have problems and if you're willing to admit that and, and go down the list that there can be uh, things in your life, then you can be, can be set free. So that is why we're here tonight. And Tommy sat under the teaching at University of Parkway Church of God a couple of Sundays ago. Now he had been saved for several months. Uh, now the 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 salvation experience was unbelievable uh, at the church because when he moved to the front and God gloriously saved him. Tommy, you wet through my shirt. I mean my coat I had on. You cried. Yeah, cried. I cried like a baby. I haven't. I've never cried like that. I don't cry. I'd rather daggone cut my arm off than do that. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. Now it's, man, I'll be sitting in church and the Holy Ghost will be getting on me. And, and I'm just happy. Just tears of joy, really. Just yeah. praising Jesus, really. Wow. I mean, it's it's been an awesome thing. I mean, I'm not perfect or any of that. But it's been it's been an awesome, i say, couple weeks yeah. now. Hallelujah. Yeah. So – your a little bit about your background 
will be things like uh, tell us a little bit about, and you don't have to go into all the stuff, but just you come from a, a pretty stout background with even military type things and right uh, um, carrying those kind of things a little, <laughs> a little forward into the civilian lifestyle using your skills that you learned right uh, in those areas go ahead and um as much as you can share but you know i know you can't <laughs> share a whole lot but um uh i served in the united states marine corps hallelujah and uh we'll stop at that yeah on that end um i learned a great deal about survival um my whole childhood pretty much was learning about survival and uh and uh just having to be in the streets all the time right um and then from there uh got out and um had some pretty pretty bad stuff happen to me um and it threw me in the street again yeah and uh started riding with a um motorcycle club <laughs> started riding with a motorcycle club and i uh, won't get into that either yeah. Uh, for a number of years, and uh, the Lord actually delivered me from them. Unbeknownst to me, He was looking out for me whenever I wasn't even worth looking out for. Yeah. And um, I was homeless for a number of years, and then um, I'll get to the better part of my life, yeah. and, and that would be the current job that I hold now at. Um, for A1 Bonding, I am their recovery agent. Yeah, hallelujah. So. I like that. And they do a wonderful job. So every fam, can I say this here for, uh, is Arthur say her name on the radio? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Megan Doolittle and Bill Doolittle, I know they own, they're part of that uh, organization. And yes, they are. Co-owners or whatever they are there. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a wonderful lady. And it, I almost say this here, every family has them. Yep. I mean, some people <laughs> don't want to admit it, but every family, and if you need them. Then you call Megan and Bill Doolittle at A1 Bonding? Yep. Yep. Is that uh, right? <laughs> yes, sir. A1 yeah. Bonding at yeah. 422 Wire Road there it here is. in Aiken. There you go. So got a you, plug in there. You got a plug in there. <laughs> so anyway, so go ahead and now, uh, uh, married? Yes, I'm married um, with a beautiful wife. Yeah, she And is uh, we have uh, one child, Valentina Grace. That's and, a beautiful name. Thank you. And... Um, and we have one on the way. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Appreciate you know it, when? Appreciate you know when? No, not yet. Our first uh, doctor's appointment will be on the 13th Hallelujah. of this month. So. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Kingdom of God's growing. Amen. It's going to grow. Hallelujah. You're going to bring them up and nurture admonition of the Lord. Amen. God blesses. Uh, he'll bless your children. That's what we're believing for. We've already prayed over the baby as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were having complications when we first found out she, she was with child. Mm-hmm. And um, it wasn't good. We've already had a couple really, really bad uh, miscarriages that uh, almost ended our relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, and so whenever, uh, excuse me, but God's gonna work this thing out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm trying. Right. To, that's the part I'm trying to get yeah, to. That's right. Is uh, my wife? Uh, we prayed over the yeah. church. Prayed over, right. and then instantaneously, like a blink of the eye. The complications that she was having were gone, yeah. oh, and um, and it's just you can tell she's pregnant now, yeah. and Amen. everything just started growing. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so you know, but, Tommy, yeah. Tommy uh, I know your wife has some kind of a. I know she has a church background, and to a degree, you know, she right. she was raised in church, and I don't know how your church background was. How how, how was it? Did you have it? None. Uh, no, sir. no, not to have none at all. So that was that's the best kind. Going of oh, somebody picking me up every once in a while on yeah. the bus, uh -huh. <laughs> school bus. I mean, the church bus. I like that. <laughs> and you know, as people's listening out there, Tommy, you're a real man's man. I mean, you know, like oh, yeah. you're saying, crying through salvation uh, because you, you're not some somebody that anybody's going to look as a pushover. If you could see Tommy today, you'd know he's very strong, man's man. And there was evidence of his salvation. You know what I'm saying? You can see it in him today. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's going to be evidence of truth. It was amazing. And for, and for several months, he, you know, he was like that, coming and going in and out of church, you know, and and was really, really um, a great experience knowing that. I mean, he, you know, the Lord has spoke to us at church at University Parkway that last year would be a year of uh, the harvest, that we would see many, many souls saved. And we saw over 50 people saved. Oh, praise uh, God. Just coming through the church last year. That's just awesome. And that's a lot of people, brother. I Amen. had 50 people in church stand uh, the last Sunday of the year and say, stand 50 people and look at all those people that God saved throughout the whole year. 
that uh, God had saved through the ministry there. And Tommy and uh, Tommy was one of those that uh, was a part for of that eternity. 50. Yeah, That's I for believe eternity. that. I believe that. That's Hallelujah. what I'm believing for. Anyway. Amen. And then so anyway, and you know, God at the end of the year, He was shifting our ministry and uh, the church, telling us that this coming year is going to be a year of deliverance and miracles. We will see a year of deliverance and miracles out at the at, at the church. And so God was preparing us coming into uh, the new year, getting the church ready. And, and if you go back and listen to the sermons though, who listen to us, and you'll say, God's preparing an army. God is sending us desperate people. God is doing this. And, God, and people kind of, some people kind of their eyes roll in the head. Oh, it's a good sermon series. Yeah, we're moving. No, I'm telling you, y'all, listen, this thing's getting ready to that bust wide open. And uh, uh, Tommy was right on the very beginning of this move coming into, into the new year. Tommy, uh, we had several people at the church delivered. I'm talking about supernatural deliverances um that like you see in the bible yes uh, and things like that and uh we're talking about um can we call them evil spirits uh what's the best word evil spirits that's not the best one uh, uh demons is that the best one bible well, calls them a lot of things evil <laughs> spirits demons unclean spirits yeah spirits of infirmity so I, you can just <laughs> pick one if you want it yeah you know so uh, delivered from demons is what i like because you know the Lord showed me several, uh, it was like four or five months ago that a person had a demon in, in them. And, uh, and he spoke to me and he told me, the Holy Ghost says, the, he named them by name. This person has a demon and this is how it entered to them. And it had nothing to do with them. It was with their parents and their grandparents and it's tormenting her mind. And the Holy Ghost knew what to call it. You know what he called it? He calls it a demon. You know what I mean? He, <laughs> didn't, right. call, he didn't call it, no, you don't want to frighten anybody. He said, you understand this term. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, as we were going into the new year, uh, uh, Tommy's right on the cusp of that thing changing in our church, and God's already delivering a lot of people. So, Tommy, we're going to pick it up here and just kind of go through what happened that night because I was teaching on a Sunday night. Um, two Sundays, two Sunday evenings ago. Mm -hmm. And I was wow. teaching on uh, how to recognize uh, the de demonic uh, activity in your life, those 15 points. And we went over like five of them last week. Yes, uh, yes. And so we were just teaching, going down the list, just teaching uh, through those things. And, Tommy, I'll let you kind of pick it up from there. And We got, it's 20, what is that, 22 minutes after the hour? And uh, if you're, you're, you're inside, it's really supernatural. Uh, I'm the host of the show, Henry Schaefer. Tommy Parrish, he's getting ready to give his testimony here. You can tune in via facebook 999 wucc click on the live stream button there at the top right hand side and go to ustream.com do it on your cell phone your tablet you can check us out live on the web or you can listen to us on uh, cwchrist.com is our website cwchrist.com and click on the red listen live button here's who we, if you're just tuning in with us we have steve hall of the johnston church of gods with sitting in here we have my co-host tim mcgiver and tommy Parrish is here with us getting ready to give his testimony of the deliverance a supernatural deliverance that you had uh just a, a couple of weeks ago go ahead and tommy let you start here well first of all i would like to say that um i'm internally grateful for men that do what god tells them to do no matter no matter what and um i'm just grateful I'm uh, just thankful, really, because uh, I've been to a lot of churches, been kicked out of a lot of churches. I've been turned around at the doors of the churches, <laughs> but uh, we won't go into all that. Um, but I'm just grateful to have men of God sitting here doing what the Lord tells them to do, period, hey, without man, apology. Thank you so much. And um, anyways, a couple uh, Sunday evenings ago, uh Pastor Schaefer here was preaching on spiritual warfare and um, going going through a, a slew of things. And I'm sitting here just counting them off in my head, going, yep, 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 I battle that, battle with that, battle with that, battle with that, battle with that. There's probably about five things. I was like, oh, I definitely don't have a problem with that. <laughs> um, you know, in my mind, and uh, he got to a point where it was uh, about multiple personalities. And uh, I've always believed or I've always known that I've always had anger issues and um, just real. If 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 you make me mad, I can get pretty daggone right nasty and even with you. 
and uh, and that probably worked out good in your um, your line of work. Right, it did. Um, yeah, it worked out great because yeah. if somebody wanted to go toe to toe with me, right, I had all this built up anger in me, and it was just like relentless, just unleash everything that's built up in me onto that one person. Yeah, which it didn't really. It, it happened, you know, with some cases, but a lot of times when I go in into a house to retrieve somebody to produce them back into uh, the county jail, um, uh, I guess because of the way I was just coming off, nobody really wanted to buck. Yeah. You know, nobody really wanted to go there. Mm-hmm. And I had a few a few that, that did, um, and they paid for it. Oh, yeah. And... Um, which, Sad them, which, wasn't it, after you see Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, neither, either way, it wasn't right. No matter no matter what, they uh, probably a couple of them just didn't deserve it. And, um, and anyways, but the pastor uh, was talking about multiple personalities, and I looked down at my wife, and I was joking. It was just, I was not joking about what the pastor was teaching about. I was joking about me having multiple personalities. Yeah. And I looked down at my wife. She's sitting there next to me. I said, well, I guess I'm demon possessed now, right? And she looked at me with the straightest, sincerest look into my eyes and yeah. said, yes, you do. Wow. And so that started really bugging me. And yeah. then I'm like all the way out the door to the truck. Now with we, Valentina. Had, we, we dismissed the church service. Yeah, yeah, the church oh, well, hey, service let me, let was dismissed. Say, let, yeah, let me tell you what I told him. I says, okay, there's going to be no deliverance service tonight. Right, we're, right, we're, right. We're not, gonna, <laughs> we're, not praying, we're not praying for no, it's just teaching tonight. It's right. just teaching no deliverance service tonight. We prayed over a few people, you know, bless them, Lord, you know, and say so you're dismissed, and we let them go, e- exit the yeah. church. Yeah, those days may be over for you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> After he tells the story. Anyway. So, anyways, um, on the way out to the truck, I'm sitting there going, going my, uh, you know, talking to my wife. I'm like, are you serious? I really have this issue? She goes, yeah, you have this issue. And um, and sh- she's like, Tommy, something, something's there. Yeah. And so, anyways, I, we're in the truck. I'm cranking it up, and I said, "Well, you know, we need to go. You know, I'm tired. I'm hungry. Whatever." And something just made me put the truck in neutral, put the emergency brake on, and um, and I said, "Well, I said, if that's the case, because I, you know, recently just got saved. You know, I just want to do what the Lord wants me to do." Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and so, anyways, I said, "Well, I think I'm gonna go in there and see what kind of book he gets all this information from." Because the last thing I'm going to come off as is a Looney Tune. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, and so, anyways, I went back into the, the church, and I'm, you know, asking everybody where the pastor's at. And uh, he's right there, so I go into the little office there. And I asked him, I said, Pastor, I said, you know, what book are you getting all yeah. this information from? Right. And it was about spiritual warfare. Yeah. And, you know, we got a book rack there Yeah. in the room. We have a mm-hmm. book rack, a little spin rack. People can come in. They can purchase the books and everything. I said, there it is right there. Yep. And so he gave me the book and all that. And so how the conversation really jump started, I really don't know. I do. I see yeah. it because you was there and uh, I could see it in your eyes and because you, and, 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 you was really concerned. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I was and, really you know, concerned. And he says, you know, you, know, you said, uh, I've got some issues and then, you know, that I, that I need to work through, uh, some anger issues. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I'm going, mm-hmm. And uh, I could see it in his face. I could see it in his face. And uh, I said, not that you were angry, but I could see that, you know, God was really working with you. And I said, um, Tommy, I says, you want me to pray? You want me to pray for you? We'll pray yep. for you right now if you Amen. want to. And uh, you said yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the now, past- your wife's in the car. She don't know nothing. Yeah, she has no idea what's, what's going on. None. And she's in there with a two-year-old mm-hmm. little girl mm-hmm. that's just dying to eat something. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, so the pastor, you know, uh, started talking to me about, you know, different issues. Well, one, another issue, you know, the main issue was anger. Yeah. And um, and then he, he just kind of like, well, what else? Well, what else? Mm-hmm. And just kind of pricking my brain a little bit to get me to think. Yeah. You know, to go ahead and really put it down. And the other one was depression. Yeah. And um, 
and uh, I guess you'd say a murderous yeah, uh, demon. Yeah, really. And, uh, and the other one was uh, suicide. Yeah, suicide. About suicide. Yep. And um, which I've I battled with that pretty much my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's three occasions where I actually went ahead and went through it. Tell tell them, but tell go ahead and tell them that. Okay, and uh, um, don't really know the dates and times, but mm-hmm. I every time I was just going through some hard stuff in my life, and I just didn't want to be here anymore. And I'm not the man to sit here and cause a spectacle. Mm-hmm. So I loaded up my shotgun. I said, I don't want to be here anymore. And racked around in the chamber and click. Yeah. And it did that several times. And um, and uh, I broke the shotgun down. I'm like, man, I'm, you know, I can't do anything right. I can't even kill myself. I can't. You know, I'm just a failure. <laughs> and so, uh, anyways, I broke it down, and there was my firing pin was broke. Praise yeah. God. And uh, the day before that, I just got through dove hunting, mm-hmm. so I knew it was working. Yeah. And uh, I keep my weapons pretty immaculate. You know, mm-hmm. I know the ins and outs of every weapon I have. Mm-hmm. And then um, with a 9 millimeter on two other separate occasions, um, basically loaded them up. And uh, chambered them and click the whole magazine on both on on both occasions. We just click 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 click. Mm. Yeah. And uh, pretty much in a row on one instance I had 15 primer failures, and on the other instance I had right at the same numbers. I had 30 primer failures. And the uh, statistics on that is you might have one primer failure in like a bazillion rounds of ammo. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, on, it's, it's usually you just God don't even hear God was that. preserving you is what Amen. he was doing. Right. Yes, he was. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that's the the main thing that I'm grateful for is the Lord looking out for me even whenever I was not worthy to be looked out for. Okay. And, now, uh, let's get back to Yeah. It. Okay, so um, let me just tell my little bit, then yeah, I'll, let, yeah, you, yeah, I'll yeah. let you plug in. Is that So I was sitting there. Uh, and we just had a little conversation about suicide and depression and murderer, uh, murder spirit. Not that you've done that, but yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what I mean. And um, and uh, anger. And listen, I'm gonna tell the people who are said who are listening out there is that in your face and in your eyes, what I saw, that wasn't you, Tommy. I mean, it was it was a demon. It was a it was a spirit. Oh yes, that was there. Oh, I know. And it was. you was set, <laughs> you was sitting at a round table in our conference room, and I said, "Here's what I want you to do. You stay right here. I'm gonna go get my Bible, and I'm gonna get a couple of ministers." So we yep. went and got a couple of ministers. Got Bill George. Got Brian Doolittle. We came in there. We sat down, and then when I came, then 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 I'm not gonna tell that part because that okay. that that would take it away. All right. Yes, because that's the greatest part. There, right. one of the greatest parts. Is that because um, the room's got like two doors going into it, you know? And uh, so we come in, we sat down, and I took my Bible and I opened it. You got that? You got that scripture, Luke do, 10, bro. Luke ten and nineteen. I sat down and uh, opened up that Bible, and uh, here's what I read to Tommy. To, uh, won't you go ahead and read it there? Uh, uh, the Bible says, "Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall." by any means hurt you and i told him i read that i said jesus and i said tommy i'm not talking to you but i'm talking to that spirit in you right now and i said gee i believe every word in this bible and Amen. i said and you cannot hurt me and i you cannot harm me or anyone here and i said in the name of jesus i'm getting ready to cast you out and uh then it was a fight that was on brother <laughs> i'm talking about it was a clash yeah, was, between uh... between the light and darkness the clash started so I asked Tommy, that we have a little little love seat in there. I said, Tommy, won't you come over here? I want you to sit down. And I knelt down uh, beside him and held his hand, and we started to pray. And uh, first of all, because Tommy's a Christian, and I know that, then we're going to confess that he, he wants to be set free from anger. So what we did is um, we confessed anger is sin because anger is sin. So if you want to be set free from any area of your life, you got to confess that as sin and then ask God to place it under the blood. Now you have a free access to the Father to help you, and we did that. You remember us doing it? Oh, yes, I do. And then after we did that, I said, now, Tommy, what we're going to do, I said, because you're a Christian, and uh, you have authority over this thing as well uh, because he gives you power over this. See what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. I said, in the name of Jesus, you command this spirit of anger to come out of you in the name of Jesus. So he says it, 
And as soon as he starts, says, I command this spirit to come out of me, brother, let me tell you what happened here. Now, those people who don't believe anger's the spirit, uh, they should have been in the room with me that night. So go ahead and let you pick it up from there, brother. Well, first, to backtrack, when I was sitting under the teaching, all I felt inside of me was wanting to take the row of seats in front of me. Because we have chairs that connect yeah. together in the sanctuary. I just wanted just to take that whole row and just stuff it through the wall of mm-hmm. the church. Yeah. And I had a, I put my arm around my wife because every time I feel like that, she it just she just comforts me and to it just keeps it calm down. Yeah. And I felt like that several times through the times that I've been coming to church, you know. Right. And uh, but that particular evening, all I could think about just and it wasn't me wanting to do it. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely the spirit that was in me, just wanting to take the table and just started just whacking everybody upside the head and just mm-hmm. stuffing it straight through the wall. Yeah, wanted me to shut just, up. Yeah, just wanted you to shut up, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and so there, after that, uh, tell me about the table sitting at the table now. Yeah. The round table. Yeah, the round table. Yeah, in the little conference room, you were saying that as I was saying. Yeah, things. as as he as the pastor was talking to me about all this stuff, every time he touched on a sensitive thing, it was just all I could do to hold back from just picking that table up and just stuffing it through the wall. Mm-hmm. And um, and so, anyways, uh, one thing that I did notice in the whole entire conversation was was the pastor. Every time he would get a little bit deeper, and we would get a little bit deeper in something. He'd bring one person in at a time, and then the Bible came in, and uh, and so they began to pray over me. Yeah, and um, and I'll tell you what, it was like it was the biggest battle in my life that I've ever been involved in. Yeah, um, it was it was like being in a in a in a fight in a yeah. in a war almost. Um. More so is after the when the demons were being cast out of me, um, the parts that I do remember because there's certain things that I just don't remember. Yeah, um, there was manifestations. Yeah, uh, strong manifestations and uh, right. Yeah. I think it was Brian, right, brother Brian, that mm-hmm. was saying, "Hey, when this was happening, but this is what I saw. Yeah. And it was three balls of light. Balls of light that that came came out, out of him. Me. Came out of him." And uh, as they were, at, you know, you got into a point that when we first said in the name of Jesus, we command this um, uh, anger to come out. Right. Well, the manifestation, I'm going to tell you, the on your face, your eyes, because from my side, it was demonic. You know, it wasn't like you are now. It was absolutely a manifestation, demonic manifestation. And when we command them in the name of Jesus to come out, is that there was that retching part that took place. I mean, I don't yeah. know what we want to say, but that is what happened. And uh, to tell it all, can I tell it all? Go ahead, brother. Tell it all. Put it is down. That there. We, have, we have shirts and t-shirts to sell there for the church. We didn't have nothing in there. I had to dump the box. Give me that box. Give me that, give me yeah. that box. And so that was the container that we used. And it was, um, I don't know, five, seven minutes of this uh, retching. And then we're commanding these different spirits to come out. And every one yeah, is coming out. I don't remember what came out of me, but I know this. <laughs> it was nasty. And yeah. I just remember my sinuses just, yeah, just... Uh, overbearing yeah uh just it's not everywhere yeah but but um the people don't understand that the de- deliverance is that i mean it is an actual cleansing. evacuation yes evacuation of a demonic spirit that has taken up residence in your being and now it is being forced out right uh, out of you and it was a uh, it was unbelievable it, it, it was it was it was such a brute force both my eyes, the whites of my eyes were bloodshot red. Yeah. Like somebody put me in a rear naked chokehold and just kept on and on and on. Just squeezed you. And just uh, wouldn't let me go. Mm-hmm. Um, from my shoulders all the way to the top of my head, 360 degrees around my whole entire, that portion of my body, I had blood splotches coming almost oh, almost out of every pore of my body. That's uh, how forceful it was. Right. That's how, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And um, my ears were swollen. My nose was swollen. Mm. And it just felt like I had just been in a battle. Yeah, just somebody just beat my behind. Yeah, you know, just beat my tail in to a bloody pulp. Well, you know, when we started, we we started this here. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I said I cl- I plead the blood. I put a bloodline. Yeah. I put a bloodline between me and you, and I put angel in the front and the back of you and everything. You know, I said uh, you can't harm us in any way whatsoever. And if those people 
who uh, have a problem with uh, praying in tongues, that I don't believe you can pray in tongues. You get in a situation like that, I guarantee you that leaves you real quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you that you, you oh, gonna yeah. start praying in tongues. You're going to start Most praying definitely. because I'm telling you what, he, all that theology you got goes, I can tell <laughs> yeah. you that. And if something rises up in you, you say, here we go. Yep. That battle was in, in there. But uh, Brian Finley was there. Bill George was there. And, uh, man, it was a glorious experience that you had because here there was a retching part uh, and then, then we cleaned everything all up, you know, and when it was over with, I mean, your face was just, when they came out and they came out screaming and I mean, if, and I, and, and, the, and they were screaming, uh, coming out and voices and, and all these kind of things coming out. Um, it was a deliverance and it was a deliverance as you would see in the time of Jesus times when right. demons came out, they talked and then they screamed when they came out. And uh, those people who said, well, I don't believe a person can have those kind of things. You just need to follow me for a little bit. Exactly. You know what I mean? And you'll see that uh, there's a lot of people who have issues like this here, and you can be set free. So you did. Anyway, so then what we do. Then um, uh, we pretty much, you know, I was wore out. Yeah. And, I mean, it was like I almost needed help getting back to the truck. I prayed for you. Yeah. Loved on you. Yeah. We all did. Everybody did. And. The, uh, I said, go get your wife. Somebody went and got. No, yeah, you because go, I said, go get my wife. Go yeah. get my wife and let her know outside. what's going on. Yeah, yeah, she was outside. And I think Brother Bill George went out to get mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And um, she was just like beside herself. And how long How long was that span? This is probably, probably about 15 minutes. 15 yeah, minutes. It yeah. A, yeah. It wasn't a very long. You know yeah. what's amazing time. about that is he walks back in. When he's walking back inside, he's normal. Yeah. And then all of this coming up out of him. Is just an immediate yeah, response so he didn't due want to, to get, prayer. He didn't want us the uh, the spirit in him, the demon spirit, whatever it is, or whatever you think it is. Everyone who's listening did not want us to pray, right? Mm -hmm. And it knew that it was getting closer and closer and closer to the Holy Ghost that could cause that thing to be evacuated in prayer to come out. Because I'm going to confront them. You know what I mean? You come for you know God had he had told us he says, and and uh, and I told the church a couple of Sundays ago in the in the message. I said, God is going to send us desperate people. And Tommy was desperate. He wanted help. Time to be free. It's time to be free. And God wants his people exactly. free. So Amen. if you're sitting Spiritual out there, freedom. if you're out there and, and you, don't, you understand that you are in bondage to these things, God wants you free. And you've got to find a place that can set you free. That's right. You know what I mean? And if your pastor's not preaching freedom, then uh, Jesus come to set you free. You know, not to medicate you. Right. Jesus didn't come to medicate you. Jesus came to set you free from your bondages. Did I do all right on that? You're doing good. All right. I Spot want to hear on. another part. Come on. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, so she comes in. Right. She comes in, and she's like. What happened? Exactly. What's going on? <laughs> like, like, what around. did y'all do to my husband? He's never looked like this. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyways, um, uh, after, after, I guess, the happiness of everything and the joy I want, I'm not going to say happiness. Yeah. Happiness is like five steps below joy. Uh -huh. Now that I've experienced what true joy is, true yeah. joy is only given by the Lord. Yeah. Happiness, you can get happy anyway, anywhere, yeah. anyhow. Yeah. In my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but, yeah. you know, from my experience, joy is is by far the best. Yeah. And, so um, y'all leave. You'll, yeah, you'll we go leave. Go home. And we're going, going home. home. Yeah. We're on the way to the house. And I said, all of a sudden, I just got all just this energy. Yeah. It's like, man, I, you know, I kind of feel good. I said, you know what? I want to take my preacher out to, to dinner. Yeah. So I said, turn the truck around, baby. And so uh, we went and um, went back to the church. Or I called you first. I yeah, think. you did. Say, I want to go out with you. Yeah. Come I said, on and go with me. I'm going, I know you need the fellowship. I said, let's go. We're going to go. Yeah. And um, and I, it was uh, brother Brian was there, and brother Bill George and their mm -hmm. families were yep. there, and your family was. We there. went to the Huddle House and had yep. a bite. Yep, and uh, he just kept on talking about everything. Because um, I, now, really, this was a good time for me to hear from your side, right? What all went on? What was going on right. in your mind? Because I can tell you what went on in my mind, right? And so we we feeling this thing out from both sides, right? And um, and so, anyways, uh, pastor asked me, he's like, "Well, do you remember this or do you remember that?" I'm like, "Not really. It was kind of hazy." And uh, and then throughout the evening, I was starting to remember things, yeah. 
And so we get to the we tell, tell we them, leave. T- yeah, before you you leave, okay. uh, tell them that every time that uh, this is where you told me this at was that every time I would uh, tell you about the fifteen points of freedom, and I'd say sp- not only freedom but it's spiritual freedom. Jesus wants you right. free, right? And every time I would say that, you would tell me. Boy, that thing would rise up. It hated me to it say did. that. You it, can be free. It really did. You can be free in Jesus' name, and uh, you don't have to live like this. That demon just did not want to hear that. Every time every time the pastor would say something about spiritual freedom, just this, this overwhelming power yeah. of just hate and just anger, mm-hmm. every single time, it, just, it was all I could do, really and honestly, not to throw something in the church, yeah, or not to stuff all them chairs through the wall, yeah, or just go in and just take my head and just ram it, just ram it in the wall, yeah. I mean, and there's been times in my life where where something would make me mad and I would run through the wall. I've done that, um, and everybody just chucked it up to well, he's he's crazy, yeah, you know, and I kind of chucked it up like, well, yeah, I am crazy, just a tiny bit, but um, and really what the real deal was was. You will have supernatural strength, you know, um, yeah. from this thing. Yeah. You know, when you have a demon like that in you. Okay, now let me let me take this here because we got about fifteen more minutes yeah, in the we, program. We got to get to the because best people part. are well, people are listening. Okay. So let me just give a break here that you're listening to ninety nine point nine WCC out of Williston, South Carolina, and you're listening to it's really supernatural. It's Friday, um, the ninth of January. So if you're listening to this any other time, it's seven forty six. Uh, in the evening, about 14 minutes to 8 o'clock, that uh, it's a rebroadcast. So just sit back and enjoy. You only got about 14 minutes. We are interviewing Tommy Parrish, supernatural deliverance he had at University Parkway Church of God. Co-host is Tim McIver. He's in the studio. And Steve Hall as well. Steve, come on in here and join us in the conversation. And we got a few minutes. Say something about what's going on here. Well, you know, God is doing some great things in the last days. And one of the things he's returning to his church is the power to deliver you know jesus says you know in my name you'll cast out demons you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover Amen. and and he even went on to say you know greater things than i've done you'll do greater than these so you know these things should be should have been happening for years and uh, for some people they have been there's been deliverance ministries out there for years but maybe in our area this is probably the first time that i've actually seen it coming alive and actually starting to function in the church yeah i'm gonna go ahead and tommy let you um get back to now so uh we got through eating we left the huddle house right you go home i'm headed to the bank to drop off the drop money you know, so <laughs> hey, we're, going, know we're going in different directions all <laughs> right, right go ahead. um and things started coming back to me about different you know different uh parts of the whole entire deliverance and all this other stuff and every time something would pop in my head it's like oh i gotta call a pastor yeah pastor let me you tell. know this what happened and uh and uh one the the, the biggest thing because we're short on time the biggest thing was i called the pastor back after about a hundred million times of calling him and going pastor who was the fourth man in the room oh uh, hallelujah i said Uh-oh. pastor who's the fourth guy i said i really want you know thanking you know just for doing what the lord right you know tells you to do now we had there. we had bill george in there had brian finley had me in there and then and you were in there as well right. but that's not what you're talking about no and then i'm like well pastor who's the fourth man in that room i want to know who that is i really just want to tell him thanks for for being there yeah um and anyways um i said what did he, he goes he like? goes tommy there was no fourth man in that room i said pastor yeah. there's a fourth man in that room I you said, can't okay, tell, tell me what he looked like. Yeah, man. and then the pastor was like, okay, tell me what he looked like. So I'm like, pastor, he had this platinum blonde hair, yeah, white dude with a Fu Manchu, looked like I could go riding riding Harleys with him. Yeah. And I said, and he had, uh, I don't really remember what he had on or nothing. I said, except I remember his shoes. Uh-huh. It was like the most, the, the prettiest pair of daggone patent leather wingtip shoes i've ever seen in my life yeah and um and so anyways uh and the pastor was like what i said well, well i said well it's got to be somebody preacher i who? said there was nobody in that room exactly. i said tommy there was nobody there and, and then he, and then you told me tommy there's nobody could have come in that room i said what I, was he doing 
I said, okay. what was he doing in the room? That's right, too. Yeah, and you told me. He, he had, had his hands above all four of us yeah. that was praying. He had his hands stretched out, stretched over. out over us, like yeah. like protection. Yeah. Ooh, I feel it. Praise yeah. God. And, uh, and I said, Tommy, there wasn't nobody in there. I know. And then you told me, he goes, there couldn't have been nobody else in that room because you posted two guys or two other people yeah. outside the door and said, do not let anybody in here, no matter what you hear, no, no matter, matter what, what goes hear. on. That's right. No matter what you hear. Yep. No matter, no matter what, what goes on. No what, whatever you don't let nobody in this room here once we close these doors. And they did not let nobody yeah, in that room. Nobody came in that room. So we know that. What do y'all think, guys? Well, I think the Lord had an angel there. You know, Amen. Could have been oh, the yeah. Lord. An angel of deliverance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, an angel of deliverance that he was there. Now, here's something I remember and uh, uh, about that because, you know, I'm going, oh, get on downtown. Know, you know, man, we, they're crazy. angels. He tells nuts. us. He sends us. We're not, when we are in deliverance, he sends angels. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. He said he, he sends, I believe he sends us angels, delivering angels to help us uh, fight these demons and evacuate them and push them out. And then I want you to tell them that as he had his hands up over you, because you're a strong man. I mean, I yeah, mean, there was up. I was powerless. Um, I believe that he was that he was there for my protection, but mm -hmm. I really honestly believe he was there for the three men that were in that room mm -hmm. praying for deliverance for me. Yeah, I really believe it was for their protection. Yeah, um, more than more so mm -hmm. because I, as I'm sitting in in the seat and the pastor had his hands on me and the other guys they were doing what they needed to do and pray right um I was powerless right and I've never been that way I've never been powerless ever in any situation mm -hmm. and um and anyways uh it was just I couldn't do anything as much before the demons got cast out of me it was like all I wanted to do was just hurt and all i want to do is just daggone just start demolishing the room yeah but i couldn't get up yeah hallelujah. i couldn't get thank up you. I thank, couldn't you, do jesus. Anything. thank, thank you, you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah thank you for sending your angels and i, and I had blood my of jesus i had my hand right. on the pastor's shoulder mm -hmm. and i not to hurt, hurt or me. anything but because i needed i needed to brace myself right you know because you was retching and all these things right. was coming out and and i was so was, we were helping you yeah, I was so afraid that I just I hurt the man because mm -hmm. I mean I could just feel the whites of my mm -hmm. knuckles clamp, clamping down on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And I said, Pastor, you didn't have bruising. He no, goes, No, you didn't have a bruise a at all. Didn't yeah. even hurt. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That was a great deliverance. Praise yes, God. it was. You know, now uh, after the deliverance and has taken place, and we tell the story, man, there wasn't nobody there. There wasn't. Nobody it was just there. Uh, you know nobody got in the room. It was the right, fourth man. Right. There was a and fourth man in there. There was a fourth man there. It's like. Wow, God did a He did a, miracle. a miracle. He miracle. Did a miracle. Yeah. And uh nobody could ever take or take me off and say, Well, you're wrong or you were just, you know well, I was just being a nut so but I'm gonna tell you this now, they'd probably get punched in the mouth <laughs> in the name of God and Jesus Christ. <laughs> and uh and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no way that anybody cannot can sit here and take take that instance. And that deliverance, yeah. and tell me that it was some kind of fake hoodoo voodoo, yeah. Because it, no, it was a, it was divine, it was supernatural, miracle, and supernatural. Sin, uh, angel seeing, I tell everybody exactly. we are uh, angel seeing, sin killing, red hot church of God. Hey, come on. <laughs> about, and this is something that you don't know yet, Pastor. All right. Don't um, shock me here now. No. The okay. other night, I'm, I'm sitting there with my daughter, which is two, uh -huh. and I was like, you love Jesus? And she said, yes, yeah. love Jesus. Yeah. And um, and she goes, where does Jesus live? And she pointed up to heaven. Uh -huh. And I said, I said, do you see Jesus in church? And she looked at me with her eyes, and they got real big, and she said, yes. Oh. I see Jesus. And that's, yeah. what, you know, yes, no, whatever. Yeah. And I said, well, where's Jesus at in the church? And she started looking in our house, and it was like she was looking at something. Something uh -huh. was there. And she, and she goes, and she points up. Yeah. And my wife and I were sitting there on the bed while she's doing this. And, and, and why I decided, because my daughter's smart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we're trying to teach her things. And, uh, and you can ask her, where does it hurt? And she'll point. She'll uh -huh. tell you where everything is on your body. Yeah. Um. And so I just, you know, it's kind of like, you know, what's up with this? And because my wife said, I said, baby, I said, do you think we need to take her 
and get her prayed over. And she said, no, no, no. She goes, what it is is the Holy Spirit is in our church. Yeah. And she doesn't really know what to do except run around. And mm. it's the whole entire time what I've noticed is the whole entire time we're actually really having church and you can really feel the Spirit in yeah, our church. right. And she's running around. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking to myself, well, what's she looking at? Because she's always looking up at the ceiling. Yeah. If you watch her, she is looking up the ceiling, and she'll run up and down the aisle. Yeah. And um, and so that's what prompted us to ask her those questions. And the goosebumps that, that was uh, on, our, on our arms and the hair standing on the back of my wife and I's neck was just, it's just unbelievable. Got five minutes. Tell us the change. But, what's happened? To, what, how's it been now? Um, A couple of weeks now. Uh, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I don't want to kill myself. <laughs> no, <laughs> Hallelujah. No, um, I haven't I had one thought of suicide. Yeah. Praise um, God. I have, uh, not, I had a natural response with anger yeah. a few and, times. And, and that's normal. Right. Out, out of your emotions. Right. That is, that is normal. a normal that's thing. That's a normal thing. It's, it's normal. Yeah. Um, whereas before <laughs> there wasn't anything normal about yeah. it. Yeah. It was just. You know, no holes barred, punch walls, yeah. punch a windshield. That's a demon. It's just a demon. whatever. Yeah. And, you, you know, know, I want to say this here. Uh, people who are in church right now or, or you're just listening and you're not, a, you're not saved, you can be bound in this area too. You're yeah. absolutely um, demonized. Uh, you know, you're, you have demons. And then there are those who are Christians. Uh, they are battling anger, can't stop it. And then, you know, you have to look at what's the term they use, see? demonized it's demonized yeah so it's yep, demonized it's that uh, go ahead and help us out on that for a few minutes well demonized uh, you know it doesn't take your salvation away but there's areas in your life the bible says don't give place to the devil but you can give place to the devil and yeah. when you do he's going to come in and take that place exactly. and that's demonized now it's not possessed exactly demon possessed possessed is when a demon owns you right uh, that's what possession is it's ownership right but you can't be a child of god and be owned by the devil too right you can't have two masters right so jesus is the master yes but then you have led in another little creature yeah and he comes in to try to lead you away from jesus from the inside divide he's on the, the house. inside divide the house divide, divide the house and if he can get that house divided enough then he will destroy that house in the end right but the holy ghost is in there trying to push him out right and those spirits are in there trying to get that person deeper and deeper away from God and into sin. And so that's the, the reason that they, they're there, and they just don't leave because they're, they're just there to try to ruin your life as a right. Christian. But right. you need a deliverance, you need, and you can be. Can be set free. You can be set free, and you need to acknowledge it because denial only keeps the system going. Now, you, real briefly, we've got about three minutes here. You and I know that God's leading our churches, both you and I, right. into a um, miracles of deliverance type. I know what God's told me for 2015 is going to be miracles and deliverance at University Parkway. And we and we are seeing miracles at our church. Yeah, I mean, these people are, it's unbelievable the things yes, that we're it seeing is. there. And you were the beginning in the 2014, going into 2015, bringing that in. And uh, I know you're believing in that as well, Steve. Amen. You know, so anyway, got a couple of minutes here. Tommy, you got just got to give me a minute to wrap it up. Um. Well, on New Year's Eve, yeah, the power of deliverance and the power of a miracle. My oh. hip catches every once in a while. Oh yeah. And I was in a lot of pain. I was on the radio. You know, everybody invited me, so I came on the radio, chiming in whenever I could. <laughs> Couldn't walk out the studio, but I knew I needed to walk because that's how I get rid Listen of this pain. This. I never thought about this. Go ahead. Oh, I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, daggone, I was outside. Pastor was had his funky hat on with New yeah. Year's thing on, uh -huh. firing all the fireworks off, and I'm just pacing back and forth the whole entire thing of the parking lot. I'm going, who is just that over a, walking? Somebody's over walking. Right, and, you know, whenever I'm hurting, I don't say anything about it. Yeah. I just deal with it, man up, and go about my business. Uh -huh. And um, and the pastor come over here and goes, man, let me pray for you on that thing. And when he touched my hip and he started praying – for the Lord to heal me, there's this warm cessation that came over my hip, and it started to hurt. It hurt so bad, I took the pastor's hand and shoved it, not in a mean way, but just to get his hand off of me because it hurt that bad. Yeah. Instantaneously, I was able to walk with no pain, and to this day, usually in seven, in, in, a, in a week of seven days, yeah. usually 
four or five of those days, I hurt. That hip hurts. Wow. And it just somehow locks. Yeah. Well, anyways, um, I have not had one symptom with Thank my you, Jesus. Thank you, with Lord. my uh, feet or my hips or my body. Period. Wow. When wow. it comes to that. Wow. Thank so, you. Jesus. Yeah. That's amazing. Talking about a miracle. Steve, say goodbye. It's good to be on the program with you tonight, uh, Pastor Schaefer. Good to meet you. Well, I know these guys. Anyway. Yeah. I just met Brother Tommy, but it's good to be here. God bless you. you I'm go going on the next door, and I'll take care of the closing. Thank you so much. Tim? Appreciate it. Well, you know, I just as you're listening out there, understand that there's anointings put on people. Pastor Schaefer, I just want to thank God for the anointing on you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's a, I, I'm, we're seeing a tremendous increase. Amen. And God, the year's going to be a year of miracles and deliverance. We didn't know that was the first one of the year. And you said, you I brought said, it in. let me just pray over your hip. And I never, mm-hmm. I never thought about it. And, and the spirit uh, of frustration was also cast out of me by um, Brother Washington. Yeah. Um, uh, last Friday night at mm-hmm. the revival. Yeah. And uh, the Lord blessed, um, and RPI doesn't know this, but he prayed, RPI the night before prayed for me to bring me abundance. Yeah. And uh, and just to let RPI know, I hope he's listening. That dag on your um, your prayer was answered because Brother Washington, as we were praying, uh, dag on took a love offering. Just bring. took a love offering. He opened my hand up. was like, bring me a dollar, and I, people just started bringing money. Yeah, and I was just like, what? And I was just <laughs> it was crazy, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had, there's so many other things that's happened. Tommy, you I look at you. I look at you, not the same man I looked across the table at uh, the other night. Um, and I see the love of Jesus in you. I know you got a, I know you got a, um, uh, your business is tough that you do, but you can, you're going to, you're going to reach people we'll never reach, you know, and you're going to, and that's my to goal make, right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. That is my goal. And, uh, you're going to make a good armor bearer. I can tell you that you're gonna be a good armor bearer for somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe you, I know that somebody. He's gonna be an armor bearer. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He'll make a good one for somebody. Anyway, maybe me. Anyway. So anyway, um, you got anything else you want to say? I can I can cut, cut a couple minutes out of this thing. You all right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm fine. And I just want to let my wife know that I love her very much. Yeah. And uh, Give her a little shout out. That's that's and I love it. my little daughter, too. Uh-huh. There you go. And her name is? Valentina Grace. That's beautiful. Amen. Brother. Well, just want to thank everybody for listening. And remember, the key is Jesus said you can be free. It's Amen. up to you. It's not up to the demons. It's yeah. up to you. Well, it's been my pleasure to uh, uh, to just share the love of Jesus with you, everybody out there, and just bring you the story of Tommy Parrish. So it's an it, you know we couldn't get into all the details tommy but it's been great yeah I mean, it's, it's a long great. story yeah but it, it was great so we did yeah. the best we can do for the glory of jesus christ well i want to thank you for listening tonight i've been your host you've been inside it's really supernatural i'm your host henry schaefer god bless you and thank you uh for listening to it's really supernatural I'm Henry Schaefer, and I want to thank you for listening to It's Really Supernatural program. Now tune in next week for more Acts of the Holy Spirit.